Auraran, whom had taken part mentally with the Plutonian in his constructed fantasy before he was dumped in Genom, revealed what he knows about the Plutonian's tempestuous and stormy childhood, which was filled with fear as he was being shoved from foster home to foster home, which was due to the Plutonian's uniqueness and ability. For no one had encountered a child like the Plutonian as he was being portrayed not to be normal and in all fairness to the plutonian as a kid he was a good kid he tried his best to impress whichever family that wants to adopt him but in the end he was rejected abandoned and unwanted all because he demonstrated his abilities in fear not knowing what to do with him they sent him back to social services and this made him feel dejected scared and lonely for these families didn't know how to handle him one thing aurora found mysterious about the plutonian is that he has an unknown origin as a teenager it was worse for he had no immediate guidance or a mentor because he grew most of his life in the orphanage this lack of guidance puts him in a position resulting in him hurting people around him especially those he really cares about and this was painful for him but this did not deter him from being good for when he became an adult he found his purpose for his abilities he began to save lives with his power was helping people from all over the world he was accepted by people and all the plutonian wanted was to be trusted and be himself around people especially the ones he cares about without walking on eggshells while aurora was talking to him the plutonian was busy beating the living daylights out of anyone for information on how to get out of Ginom. he was using brute force aurora understanding the plutonian's plight continued in telling him that what baffles him the most is that everyone he cared about out, turn their backs on him just because he made one mistake which in truth cost children's lives and this made him snap and stop caring about the safety of humanity because they didn't deserve him in all the chaos resulted in him being captured by the vestment soldiers who took him away with them and when they had no use for him they dumped and abandoned him at the center of the sun in an intergalactic asylum in Genom. the plutonian still beating the hell out of some of the residents of Genom, auroran advised him that his brute force wound get him any answers that he is the only person that can help him to escape this asylum so the plutonian in frustration questioned who auroran was and in irritation the plutonian blasted his face to reveal his identity on the surface, Modius is seen as the greatest arch enemy of the Plutonian. But to Modius, it started as curiosity, which led to obsession and propelled to an insatiable hunger for the Plutonian. Modius, in his twisted obsession with the Plutonian, was doing this out of love for him. But what irritates Modius is that he had to share his love for the Plutonian with others and was having none of it. Android Modius, whom is being inhabited by Modius, challenged the Vespan ambassador that he and Cubit have come to retrieve the Plutonian. But the arrogant, cocky Vespan ambassador looked down his nose on them, telling Modius Android, whom is being inhabited by Modius, to watch his tone or he would see this as a declaration of war. Cubit, who was in no good mood and wasn't tolerating any nonsense from the Vespan ambassadors, told him that firstly he wants him to know that he was not happy with his race using his invention the quantum jumper as transportation to invade defenseless planets and that he should know that he has the capability of taking it back but the Vespan ambassador wasn't taking Cubit seriously for he thinks Cubit as a human is beneath him so Cubit demonstrated what he can do by switching off the Vespan's quantum jumper and lo and behold one of their spacecraft crashed letting the Vespan ambassador know he is not joking around nor is he bluffing so in tremendous fear, the Vespan ambassador immediately gave Cubit the coordinates of where the Plutonian was through telepathy. And as Cubit, an android Modius, whom is being inhabited by Modius, was leaving, Cubit used his quantum jumper to shatter the hands of the Vespan ambassador and they left. The Plutonian, seeing the face of Auroran, he couldn't put a finger on it if he had seen this face before. It was unrecognizable to him. In anger, he tried to attack Auroran, asking him why was he in his dreams. So Auroran, without 
without fighting back and not answering the question asked satisfyingly, told the Protonian that if they are going to escape this asylum, they have to work together and that it doesn't have to trust him. Now, Auroran made the Protonian understand that they can't just fly their way out of Genom, for the outer surface of the walls covering Genom is radioactive. And even if they make it out, how will they find their way home? For the best way to escape the asylum, according to Auroran, is to go beneath or below the surface of Genom, in which they will have to face difficult adversaries and opposition. For it wasn't going to be easy, as there are levels and stages to pass through. Auroran telling the Plutonian to look deep into the core of Genom, and when he did, he could see individuals going in and out of a bright hub. So the Plutonian finally agreed to work with Auroran, for he somehow trusted him, and most importantly, he needed someone to be able to watch his back. Before they know what was happening, they were being fired and attacked by the guards of Genom with sedative grenades. As the Plutonian dig the surface of the floor and parasitic minions came out in large numbers and attacked the guards in a way to distract them. As the Plutonian and Auroran moved further, something attacked the Plutonian from behind. It was a giant bat-like alien creature which screeches loudly and it was deafening. As the Plutonian struck it and knocked it to the floor, the Plutonian grabbed the creature from the ground as they battled each other, trying to stop it from attacking him. He got distracted as he realizes that he could hear and understand the creature shouting free before he could respond. Respond, his head ended up in the jaws of the bat-like creature.